Hey there, and thank you for joining me on the Retro Game Couch. And in today's video, I want to show you something that I found on a photography expo. I've been going to this expo for the past two years with friend of the channel, Clemens. He is also the one who set me up with this new YouTube camera, and he got me a little bit into photography. So during this particular expo, I was looking for some retro lenses. And while browsing for retro lenses, I found a box full of these. These are Sony Mavica cameras or Mavica. And this particular model stores its pictures on floppy disks. So I was immediately intrigued. And in this video, we're gonna check it out. So let's go. In August of 1981, Sony unveiled a prototype of the very first Sony Mavica as the world's first electronic still camera. The first models in the Mavica line weren't digital, they were still video cameras recording analog scan lines onto 2 inch still video floppies. Mavica, which is short for magnetic video camera, refers to the usage of removable magnetic discs as the camera's recording medium. In 1996, Sony introduced the first true digital cameras in the Mavica line, the Mavica FD5 and FD7. They added FD in the model name, referring to the use of regular 3.5 inch floppy disks for storage. Several models were released in the following years, for example the MVC FD81 in 1998, which was the first Mavica camera that could capture digital video. In 2001, they released a bunch of models, including the camera I have, the MVC FD87. Later, the Mavica series switched to 8cm compact disc for storage, and the FD part in the model name was replaced by CD for compact disc. So, technically, this is where the Mavica stopped being a Mavica, since the MA part meant magnetic, and compact discs are not magnetic, they use lasers. They should have renamed the Mavica to Lavica Laser Video Camera because come on, lasers man! Sony released the last CD based Mavica camera in 2003. So here is my Sony Mavica FD87 that I picked up and as you can see it's, it's fairly used. But I, I love how it looks. It's, it's amazing and the fact that it uses floppies is just so intriguing so I, I really like it it has a 1.3 megapixel sensor it uses a sony lens as you can see it says there sony lens optical three times so three times optical zoom on the front you also have the flash and a light sensor for the flash it has the zoom button and the shutter on the front on the bottom is the battery compartment for an Info lithium battery. They are still available, but they're pretty expensive. And it also has a tripod mount. Uh, the route I went, you can see on this side, because it has a DC in, and I bought a DC to USB cable, so I can just use a power bank. And this is how I used the camera. On the side is the floppy disk mechanism, which only takes HD floppies, so the 1.44 Mac floppies. It doesn't do double density disks of 720K, and it also doesn't do the flash path. Uh, while on the front it does say that it uh, supports memory sticks with a special adapter, it's not this adapter. It's a special adapter that Sony made especially for this camera. So you can use a special adapter with memory stick, <laughs> Sony proprietary all the way. On the back is a nice big LCD screen, which is nice because it doesn't have a viewfinder. You can toggle the backlight of the LCD screen on and off, which is useful if you're using the battery, the info lithium battery. With a power bank, it's not so important. There's a light sensor on the top. So if more light falls in, the, the screen gets brighter. So it's very readable in sunlight. Here we can switch between viewing images and taking images, play and still. And here are some functions like turning the flash on and off, different focus settings. So it has autofocus, but you can set some fixed focus settings as well. There are different functions which you can use. You can turn on and off different things on the display. And here's a D-pad to navigate the menus. To take a picture, you half press the shutter button. 
Then it will do the autofocus, auto exposure and the correct white balance. And as soon as you get a green icon, if you full press, it writes the image to disk. The camera supports a few different resolutions, but the highest resolution is 1280 by 960. And if you use that resolution, you can store about six images on a single floppy or 32 images if you use an 8 Mac memory stick. And you can of course copy the pictures over to your computer using a normal floppy drive. The camera even creates a web page with which you can view the pictures. Not really useful, but it's still a really cool feature. To see what kind of pictures the Sony makes, I took out the Sony camera and my Canon camera out for a walk and I took some pictures of different objects so we can compare them side by side. So here is a building taken with the Canon. And here is the same building taken with the Sony camera. And side by side you can see that the one on the left has much more natural colors than the one on the right. Here is a nice staircase that I came across taken with the Canon. And here is the same staircase taken with the Sony. And here the colors look really good. If you check side by side. It's pretty close. Of course you get the nice depth of field with the Canon, but this is an okay picture. Here's a tree taken with the Canon. And here's the same tree taken with the Sony. And here the grass is way, way too green. These colors look totally off. And side by side you can see that the one on the left looks way more natural than the one on the right. Finally, we have some street art taken with the Canon. Looks really vibrant, really nice. But the Sony scores really well here. It also looks really vibrant and really good. And side by side, you can hardly tell the difference. Of course, when you zoom in, you see the limitations of the 1.3 megapixel sensor. So this was a closer look at the Sony MVC FD87, a digital camera that stores its pictures on a normal floppy disk. How awesome is that? So for now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you're a patron, you are awesome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, that helps out the channel a lot. And I hope to see you next time on the Retro Game Couch.